When it comes to these modern works of art we call games, especially open world games, I think a lot of us would agree that Rockstar has been not only at the pinnacle when it comes to delivering that perfect balance of fun gameplay, immersive worlds with great storytelling, but they've pushed the bar so high to the point that they're in a league of their own. They always manage to exceed my expectations because Whenever a Ubisoft game comes out or any other company releases a title, we normally just play it and if we like it, we like it and if we hate it, then we go out of our way to slam it as much as we can. And guys, before we continue, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because we got a lot more content like this coming soon. But whenever a game comes out, we never say, oh, this game is not on the Rockstar level because we know and accept that most games will never ever be on the Rockstar level and you're totally fine with that because at the end of the day someone has to be the best at something that's just competition that's just life but Dragon's Dogma 2 is probably the only game I've ever played that's made me say to myself so many times while playing it that this kind of feels like a Rockstar game without it directly trying to be a GTA clone like Watch Dogs or Saints Row and just so you know I think both of those franchises suck and don't come nowhere close to feeling like a Rockstar game well at least not with their last entries in my opinion and so it makes perfect sense for me to feel that way about Dragon's Dogma 2 because the director openly admitted that GTA 5 was a heavy inspiration for the game which I did mention in a previous video so there's no need for me to quote it again I will link it down below so you can check it out if you haven't already but anyways with Dragon's Dogma 2 they were thinking about how GTA 5 manages to combine multiple gameplay systems into a satisfying experience that also blends well with the level of freedom they give to the player. Now I think the director really wanted to crack the code on the systems that make open world and sandbox games like GTA 5 feel alive and fun. They wanted to crack the code on the systems that can ultimately end up leading to chaos in game which therefore equals entertainment for the player. For an example, in Dragon's Dogma 2, a dragon or a griffin can swoop down and start attacking you unexpectedly unexpectedly and maybe an ox cart passes by while you're fighting it and the soldiers end up helping you fight off the griffin. I find that enjoyable and satisfying and so they obviously did a fantastic job when it comes to cracking the code. Capcom definitely chose the right game to take inspiration from when it comes to open world design because whenever someone uses the term open world Capcom is never the first studio that comes to my mind to be honest so if they want to make a push towards more open world games they definitely have my interest with whatever they do next in regards to open world because if this is the way they think then it shows they're not ignorant and out of touch and I see them on a level above Ubisoft and From Software because those two companies seemingly focus on expanding their worlds with bloat as opposed to evolving their worlds with interesting systems but that could change in their future projects but I ain't expecting that to happen. Like they could get inspired by even Dragon's Dogma 2 and say you know maybe we've been doing it wrong. Instead of packing our games with bloat we need to start evolving the systems and you know making them feel different and more fun. And because of Dragon's Dogma 2 I would put Capcom right next to CD Projekt Red if this was a tier list because the team behind DD2 has certainly convinced me that they know how to make a fun open world game. Hopefully we get a Devil May Cry open world but I'm going to keep dreaming about that one. Honestly I don't think we're ever going to see that so don't get your hopes up if you're a DMC fan. One thing I would like to see Capcom do with some of their future open world games is to have a more character driven story in some of them at least because I personally am not a big fan of the silent protagonist trope even with Zelda or any game at all. Not that I think it's bad. I just think you have a better chance at creating a story with more dramatic flair if you create cool characters. That's a major reason why we love games like DMC, God of War, etc. But at the same time, I kind of love making my own character. And in the case of Dragon's Dogma 2, I would not trade the character creator for a new Capcom character because there's a chance I could potentially not even like that character because I mean look at Geralt of Rivia a lot of people don't like that character but I do and look at Resident Evil those are character driven stories but I rarely play any of them because I'm not a big fan of those characters maybe more players are just more likely to play a game through if they get to make their own character so it's kind of risky any path they take one thing I like about how Capcom does their stories well at least some of them, like Devil May Cry and Dragon's Dogma 2. One thing I really like about them, and even Resident Evil, right? They get straight to the point. And any title I play, all I need the story to do is just to make me care enough about doing whatever I'm doing in the world. That's all the story needs to do for me. And usually, I see characters as the soul of a game. But again, with Dragon's Dogma 2 and the approach that they took with the open world game and 
the design of it and the play systems this is one of those games where i would tell you the world is both the main character and soul of this game and that's just one reason why dragon's dogma 2 is a masterpiece because that in itself isn't easy to pull off otherwise it would be common in modern games we would see it in pretty much every ubisoft game we play but for some reason they still can't crack the code even after decades like with that massive flop skull and bones whatever that is you know skull and bones is like a cake they left in the oven for way too long and now it's not even a cake anymore but anyways i'm trying to stay on topic now dragon's dogma 2 feels like the game we would be playing if rockstar had made a medieval fantasy game that's the best way for me to describe dragon's dogma 2 to someone who hasn't played it now maybe if rockstar made a game like this it would probably have a roller coaster of a story but after all is said and done gameplay is king and if you want to say dragon's dogma 2 is not on the rockstar level i won't argue with that especially after seeing gta 6 for the first time and we know that game specifically is in a different league potentially even being the first real quadruple A game we ever actually play. But I have to say they came close enough to the Rockstar level in order to impress and fascinate me as a player, at least from a gameplay perspective. Now look at this NPC, how he blushes when he speaks to the Arisen. Your presence is a soothing one. And look at how this NPC chops wood. you can tell they went the extra mile to add some of these seemingly irrelevant details that help the world to feel more alive and we know that Rockstar and CD Projekt Red are two of the main developers that do these things in interesting ways and even with the physics right in the platforming section in DD2 I mean it's great and the game doesn't feel floaty at all and I just love that right now one feature that this game has that I really like and think works well for this title specifically is the cemetery system you see the thing about dragon's dogma 2 is that it has a limited number of NPCs and whenever they die they get taken to the cemetery you no longer see them walking about until you go and resurrect them with a wake stone and that makes the game feel more immersive for some reason I have no idea why I just love how Capcom gave players the freedom to impact the world in a certain way where if I see an NPC that I don't like maybe he looks weird or maybe he says something funny or something stupid or just something that I don't like right I can just pick him up and throw him in the water right and that's just so satisfying I know I don't have to deal with that NPC or ever see that NPC again or if I'm out on my adventures and I see a bunch of goblins about to abuse and use a female merchant traveling to the next town right i can easily jump down to the rescue and destroy all of those goblins like it's nothing right and i feel good about that or if they end up killing the npc i can use a wake stone to resurrect her and let her keep on going about her business because she's a merchant and i might potentially want to buy something from this npc in the future and i just love that aspect of the game and i can't get enough of it now if you enjoyed this video and you're loving dragon's dogma 2 don't forget to like the video and subscribe as well and in the meantime here's two more videos that i think you might like